What's going on everybody? Riley Welch, owner of 92 Social. Today's episode four of the podcast and today I have something really, really interesting actually. I, I saw them on social media and as a former server or as a person that used to be in the restaurant industry, this is crucial, especially in a time like this where you not necessarily just want a beer or you just want a wine. You want a cocktail. You want a nice crafted cocktail and you don't know how to make it. These guys, Open Bar Toronto. Woo. Go check them out. We'll plug you guys later. But I'm with Doug. Doug, man, how you doing? Hey, man, how you doing? Good. Thanks for coming on the podcast, man. This is a this is an exciting time. Uh, it's 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 one of those things where you never think about it until you, you see someone do it, like yourself. I'm like, this is so smart. Everyone needs to know how to make a well uh, crafted drink. So just to start off, like, how did this all start? It? Uh, well, originally Open Bar TO uh, started as a beverage uh, catering company. So we, uh, we sort of, you know, we went to a wedding, like everyone's been to a wedding where the service sucks and they run out of red wine or whatever, right? So um, that's how, that's actually precisely how it started. We were at a wedding and we were really disgusted and we thought, you know, we can do this a lot better. We're hospitality professionals ourselves. We can do this better for the money that people are paying and, and, and all that. So we started Open Bar TO with the goal of raising the bar in, um, in beverage service for catered events. So weddings, corporate events, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and that's been great. We've been doing that for about two years. Uh, and then the pandemic happened. Uh, so here we are, right? Um, so we saw a bit of a need uh, where, well, mostly in ourselves, actually, right? Because we're all in the same boat, whether you're working, uh, working from home, pardon me, uh, whether you're out of work, whatever everyone's kind of stuck inside without much to do and that gets old really fast um i've been drinking the same beer for a month before i was like you know what i've got it i i have to do something different i know how to do it right yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I need to do something different so we saw two needs actually uh we thought you know people are are sitting at home not a lot of uh of stimulus in their lives uh, and we thought, you know, we can sort of bring a skill. And I think a lot of people are doing that. A lot of people are learning different things and taking this opportunity to do different hobbies. Uh, we thought cocktail making would be, you know, kind of a great, a great thing. So we wanted to be able to teach people how do we make pro level cocktails at home. And then the other need was uh, sociability. You know, uh, we, we all don't have that outlet anymore. You know, uh, we're doing this thing all the time on Zoom or house party. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, do, I do pub nights on Saturday night with my boys, uh, which is oh yeah, it's great, yeah. right? But yeah. uh, again, I I find it gets old pretty quick. So uh, again, this this type of service we thought could uh, liven things up a little bit for people and give them something uh, constructive to do. Yeah, see, that's a good point because uh, everyone now that you know you haven't, they're not in the office or you're not in uh, a party atmosphere, but you're always having happy hour, virtual happy hour, or pub nights, and always come to a, a beer or a whiskey, but why not, like, wow your friends or maybe your partner who, you know, doesn't necessarily know that you have that interest, but it's, it's funny that you mentioned where it all started from a wedding. It all started, because a lot of times people are there just to dance, and every entrepreneur has that moment where they're like, it's a good idea, but I think I, uh, I, think I can do it better. That's how, how everything kind of starts, and that's really cool. And uh, so, first and foremost, uh, we're, we both work in the industry. You're working in the industry. What, as a bartender, as a mixologist, how like what bar makes the best cocktails, or what's your go-to spot? That's a great question. I first, I'm gonna I'm gonna frame this in. Uh, I, I'll always be a bartender at heart, and lately I've been doing this a lot. So I'm I feel very much like a bartender. Uh, I'm I'm more in upper management these days, okay. uh, but I, I was a bartender for many many years. Um, so I, I I'll sort of answer these questions through that kind of lens. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, yeah, my my go to spot that's that's tough. Uh, a lot of us in the industry, and uh, if there's bartenders and servers watching. Uh, you guys know we we tend to like our hole in the walls, the the bars in the the yeah. dark alley that no one else knows about, and uh, you know for a variety of reasons, maybe because they're not busy and we love that. 
<laughs> or yeah. uh, who knows. Um, but rather, honestly, rather than shout out, like a, there's there's thousands of amazing cocktail bars in Toronto, right? Like we we live in such an amazing city for that purpose. Uh, rather than shout out a couple options, because I feel like if I if I gave you two or three great spots, I'm going to be leaving out the other hundred that are also doing really amazing things. Mm -hmm. uh, so honestly, for if if people are into going to get a, a great crafted cocktail, I would totally recommend just look for the places you wouldn't normally see. You know what I mean? Google it, Google cocktail bar near me, and you'll be surprised. I do it all the time. And I the, the search results change constantly because there's always different places to try. So I, I suggest doing that, you know, self-exploration. And uh, I would maybe, if you're looking for craft cocktails, I would maybe avoid kind of the large corporate big box kind of stores, but that would be my only piece of advice, you know? But it's, it's funny you said the, you know, when you're in the industry, when you go to like a hole in a wall or like a, it's like a, a, a space that no one really goes to because one, you worked a long night, you talked to a lot of people. And second, you're just like, all you want to do is just drink and hang out. So that's a very industry answer. And I love that. <laughs> I had that in mind. I was like, I think he's going to say, it. I just want to check it out. I'm like, perfect. Uh, so like you were saying, you make a lot of drinks at home. What's your go-to drink? Well, uh, that's a good question. Um, I'm a whiskey guy, uh, as is, as is my, uh, my partner. Um, so, you know, we, well, we run a bar catering company. So, I mean, we, we've got a good stock of, of, uh, of cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, and my partner actually, she works at, uh, I'm not going to shout out the name for branding, but, uh, yeah. she works at an amazing, amazing whiskey bar. So she's, uh, she's got this amazing stock of stuff. So we oh. like to do kind of whiskey forward. Um, kind of stuff so yeah. like my, my go-to honestly would be like an old-fashioned and even if i was back at work making drink, if someone said hey you know what's your favorite drink to make um i like to say an old-fashioned because it's uber simple it's like the the ingredients are so so simple it's whiskey sugar citrus and some bitters and that's it however every bartender in the world makes it a little bit different mm -hmm. uh and that sort of showcases their own style and their personality and you know, I, I think that's that's an amazing example of a drink. Yeah. See, ooh, I think we can have another podcast just on whiskey because I'm a whiskey man too. I have like, I have a good stock of it. I always love talking to other people. I'm like, oh, so what kind of brands are you into? Uh, what are you drinking? Like, what's your like top shelf whiskey? So it's, it's different. That's a different episode in itself. Uh, oh but uh, yeah, so like if you're, Let's say like we were talking, going back to like a happy hour or if you have like a Friday night with your partner, uh, what is the uh, easiest, fanciest drink to make? Easiest, fanciest. Um, yeah, that's interesting. You know what? Actually, why don't I use that opportunity to make you a drink right now? Done deal. Ooh. Oh, second cool. Time. So... Uh, I, I just got this set up and we're going to burn through this really quick. If I was doing a, a one of our cocktail seminars, we might go through uh, a little slower uh, mm -hmm. to let people catch up because we do like to actually build the drinks along with people online and make that interactive and we can give some input and all that kind of stuff. Today, though, we'll just go through it really quick. Uh, I'm going to do, uh, I know I just said I'm a whiskey guy. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do a gin, a gin sour today. Yeah. So... Uh, it's a, it's a gin sour, so it's, uh, sours are all built the same. You know, it's, it's a base liquor, this, in this case, gin. We've got lemon juice, uh, which is very common, uh, uh, simple syrup or sugar, if, uh, if people just want to use sugar cubes or whatever. Um, and, then, and then bitters, that's, that's basically a sour. Um, I'm going to do, again, the, the, the fancy part that you mentioned. Uh, it's not that fancy. It's, re it's really simple. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to throw in, I'm gonna, I, this is going to weird you out. I'm going to throw in egg whites uh, into uh, my sour today. So what that does is it gives us kind of a creamy uh, texture to the cocktail, um, which, you know, is, it's, it's different. But you'll see it a lot in cocktail bars. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's a great idea. Yeah. So what I'm going to start with, uh, and I'll tell you why, I'll start with the egg because I don't want to corrupt if I, I mess this up. I don't want to 
corrupt the rest of the ingredients. So what we're going to do is separate the egg white from, uh, excuse me for one sec. We're going to separate the egg white from the yolk. Uh, so we'll just give this a little crack. Okay, all right. All right, so, and all we're doing is passing the yolk back and forth between the two halves. And it's gonna empty the egg white into our cocktail without breaking the yolk. And uh, I'm really glad that we used this opportunity to not uh, make a mistake here, so that's fantastic. There <laughs> yeah, no, in fact, if that was me, I would be freaking out and like, I'll probably mess something up. Oh, I know, right? Like, you'll do this a thousand times, no problem. And then as soon as you're on camera, that's when things go wrong. Oh, yeah. That, yeah that's just my Serbian career in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, our seminars are all about making this accessible for people at home. I happen to have kind of bar-appropriate tools at home. Yeah. Uh, it's not necessary. You can do these things in kind of whatever you happen to have. I happen to have a shaker. So I've got my egg white in there already. I'm going to take pure lemon juice. Now, the reason I'm doing this next is we want to cook the egg white and break down the proteins. So we're going to uh, just add in uh, one ounce of lemon juice into this. I'm going to uh, take my gin. Let's do the gin next. I'm, I'm using a Sipsmith gin. You can use whatever you want. It's just a typical London dry. Uh, we'll do two ounces of that. And then we need to sweeten it up. So we use a sugar. I have simple syrup. It's common for bartenders. You can make it at home really easy. It's another thing we cover in our sem seminars. Uh, but I'm going to go a little above that. Normally, I would do half an ounce of simple uh, syrup, and that would be it. I happen to have made a dark berry syrup. So that's going to give a totally different flavor to this and a different color, which is kind of cool. Um, but honestly, it's dead easy to make at home. You know what I mean? Like anyone, anyone can do this if you know how. So I'm gonna mix the syrups. I'm gonna put a quarter ounce of each. Cocktails are all about balance. You can put whatever you want in it, but you wanna make sure the sweet balances with the sour. And then I've got my, my uh, bitters, just Angostura bitters. Um, very common, everyone uses them. Great to have at home for cocktails. And there's no, there's no like technical, sorry, go ahead. Where can you get the uh, bitters for people that? Most, uh, most grocery stores. Uh, oh. I, think, I think you'll find it. I know it's not like you wouldn't really think that, but Angostura bitters you'll find, uh, I believe in the international section, if I'm not mistaken. And if I am mistaken, possibly bacon. Uh, but you'll find that in like a Loblaws or whatever. Um, and then there's lots of different other kinds of bitters like cherry and orange and chocolate, all kinds of stuff. You find those at like bar supply stores. Hmm. When we're dealing with Angostura, you can't really put in too much. I My thing is like three dashes. You can do five if you prefer. It doesn't really matter. Um, so bitters act as kind of the binder into a cocktail. So now the crucial important part here was that we've got the egg whites. We want to give that time to cook and break down so that we're not drinking a raw egg, which is disgusting, right? <laughs> so again, I'm using a shaker. You could use Tupperware if you don't have one at home, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to do a shaker. And I'm going to give this a good long shake again to let those egg whites break down. Notice I didn't put ice in this time. We're going to do oh, ice okay. afterwards. Oh, okay. This is called a, a dry shake. And again, it's to give that egg white extra time to froth up and break down. We'll open that guy up. We'll throw in a bit of ice and then we'll do our real shake. All right. And I'm gonna get my, uh, my glass already here full of ice. So sours are one of those things bartenders do like to do. You ask for sort of fancy. It does look look fancy. It takes an extra step to do, but it's as simple as any other cocktail, you know? So we've got our ice in here, so we're going to give this a really solid shake. There we go, yeah.
Beautiful. And yeah, putting it on tight because they do like to explode. Oh, oh yeah. All right. So then we're just going to use a, a strainer. Again, you can find whatever way you want to strain at home. And we'll toss that over ice. Ooh, that is the easiest, fanciest drink. It gives a really nice uh, flavor. And no drink is uh, finished without the, uh, the garnish. And this is going to be super simple. We're just going to cut a lemon into a wheel. You can do whatever you want, but uh, this is dead easy. And we'll just throw that right on top. Ooh. And you notice the color, we've got a lot, nice little pink. That's the dark berry syrup. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Th yeah, that's damn. Our and it's that easy. Man, that is, see, I, a lot of people don't realize how, you know, obviously there's other drinks that are more intricate and a little difficult, but majority of the time, good cocktails are, you know, simple to make or they're, easier than you think to make and that's awesome and you didn't mention earlier before let's get on to a uh, open bar toronto at uh, the online seminars so how does that work how do people kind of get towards that yeah that's that's a good question so i mean we're just like everyone in the world we're we're trying this out in this brave new world of ours so uh we just finished or we're about to finish tonight we're going to do our last our last uh, online online seminar for the moment. Uh, what we wanted to do was do a string of them. So we did whiskey cocktails, gin cocktails. Tonight is rum. We did a vodka cocktail session. Uh, but we wanted to get used to the technology and make sure that we're formatting this properly. Get a lot of feedback from people and and see what what do they really need to know and, and want to know out of these seminars. Uh, so we're gonna finish that up. Uh, and then start kind of a once every two weeks uh, basis. So keep an eye on our website to see what's coming up. Um, anyone watching at home, if you have things that you specifically want to learn, for example, um, tequila cocktails seem to be what, what people are really uh, craving these days, apparently. So we're going to do that. We're going to do a, a sangria seminar. Um, mm -hmm. But we're going to do these once every two weeks or so. Um, so how you do that, you just, you sign up, uh, we do charge $10 and some of our, uh, some of the proceeds go towards a charity called the Bartenders Benevolent Fund. And we're mm -hmm. super proud to support that. Uh, it helps bartenders, servers, hostesses, bussers, all that, all front of house people that have been put out of work through this situation, kind of support themselves with their bills. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're excited to be part of that. Um, so that's how that works. The seminars last about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. We go through two, three drinks and it's very interactive, but it's mostly instructional. But we do offer another format that we're really excited about that we're gonna begin pushing now, and that's uh, online cocktail parties. So that's more of a social thing, you know? So that's like if you've got a pub night with your friends or a regular meetup time, uh, now we're gonna offer you or could offer you a little bit of structure behind that. We'll come in, we'll spend an hour and a half, two hours with you live. We'll all make a couple cocktails as a, as a group. So there will be an educational component, um, but it's a social thing. We can all chat with each other. You guys can have your, your kind of a night and uh, we can all have a lot of fun. It's also good for team building for corporate events as well. That is very true. That is very true. I remember those days in a serving, uh, in a restaurant that we had like those nights we had like, in, like the industry night, like on a Monday, Tuesday, maybe Sunday, where you get together, possibly go to like a cooking class or maybe possibly like a, uh, like a drinking class, like you how to make a drink, not drinking class. That's a dip. That's pretty much after the shift. Uh, but yeah, that's it's something great. Uh, but have you noticed anything different from the recent events? Uh, has your business been affected by uh, COVID-19? Yeah, I mean that's that's a good question as well. I mean, I think it's really it's 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 very unfortunate to see. Let's get that out of the way. I mean, we all know that businesses yeah. are really struggling to uh, to maintain themselves, and we're seeing unfortunately a lot of great places close. Uh, so obviously, we're hoping that'll turn around. Um, at heart, Open Martio is still a, a catering company, and right now, no one's catering anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot of people that are are looking towards you know. We were supposed to get married this summer. 
uh, now we're going to push it to the fall or next year or whatever. And so we're getting a lot of calls about that, about future events, which is great. Um, so there's an optimism, uh, which is great to see. Yeah. Uh, but right now, there's not a lot of business happening for us. Um, I think what's great to see is, is watching businesses through the hardship of all this struggle, not struggle, pivot and adapt and, and do different things, you know, like, I, I mean, we're, we're trying something ourselves, obviously, with what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll, you, I mean, the world that we saw in regards to takeout a month ago was very different than the world we see today. Mm -hmm. You know, now they're offering cocktail packages. You can, you can order wine and beer. Uh, there are some restaurants are offering like a catered dinner for two all set up and ready for you. Like that's, that's cool, you know, and it's great to see these adaptations uh, happen, you know? Yeah, no, I, exactly. Cause last week I was, uh, we, me and my girlfriend ordered from a spot uh, where we live and not only that they have the cook, like you were mentioning, yeah, they just give you the ingredients and you cook it at home. But it, they have like a general store, a liquor store, and then the restaurant. And then a, it's, for me, as a person, like an entrepreneur, I looked at, I look at that and I'm like, that is a great idea. They, it's a great way to uh, go with the trends and adapt to the situations that you've been held. Because uh, other than that, you're going to be just sitting there. So instead of just sitting there, you're just going with the times and I'm so happy to one support them because the creativity is amazing. And then again, it's always important to support local businesses, local uh, restaurants in a time like this. And if they're putting their best foot forward, we should do the same. We should I'll, at the very least, maybe pick up a bottle of wine or a six pack of beer, at least something to show them like, Hey, we got you. Cause you got us, way before this whole thing started. So I'm happy we got that uh, topic covered. Uh, so as a server, I had a lot of pet peeves. I had a lot of things that, that annoyed me. And one thing that I didn't think so for the bartenders is that putting drinks in different glasses. Is that overrated or underrated as a bartender or uh, as an industry professional? Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're right. And uh, you know, it's one of those things that <clears throat> Does it really matter? I, I mean, probably not, but it, yeah, it bugs the hell out of me too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean like that, that's to me, that started like 10 years ago, 15 years ago when, um, you know, we all started putting beer in the correct branded glass mm -hmm. that I don't know if anyone remembers, but 20 years ago that didn't happen. Um, so, and now that's just an expectation, you know, which is a great, a great sign of the industry evolving and becoming more specific and more detailed. And that's, that's great. So that, yeah, you're right. That drives me nuts when, uh, when it doesn't happen. Um, yeah, pet peeves. I mean, like it happens, it happens all the time. You, you, I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm a manager. So half my job is trying to not sweat the small stuff, uh, <laughs> focus on the guest experience, but yeah, there's, there's those things. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's definitely crazy. There's so many stories in the restaurant industry, especially as a manager and especially dealing with guests that didn't have the best experience. And it's one of those things where you try everything to make them happy. Um, obviously not naming names or anything. Do you have any mo uh, moments or uh, memories where like, ah, you know, after it happened, like, I ah, will remember this for a long time. Cause I, I definitely have a few moments or stories that I have from the restaurant days. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, I don't even know if I want to want to call out specifics there, but you know, uh, I see it's I'll, tell you, crazy. <laughs> I'll tell you a general, a general rule I found is, Perfect. you know, when, <clears throat> when you're uh, dealing with, I don't even want to call them difficult situations, not difficult people. Mm -hmm. Um, as long as you're, you're all speaking the same language and usually you, you are, you know what I mean? Like ultimately a guest wants a great experience. We want to give them a great experience. As long as we can sort of meet there, mm -hmm. then we can sort of find, find a path forward and make sure everyone's happy. Yeah. But there's, I mean, there's times where, uh, to be honest, some people just, they, some people don't want to have a great experience and they, they would like to just be dissatisfied. It happens. I mean, that's, yeah. I, Although I think, I think when we, when we all get back to work, hopefully that's going to happen a little bit less as, as I, I think this is a, a little bit of a reality check for all of us. And, yeah. uh, 
you know, even myself, like I'm a little bit more thankful when I go get a Tim Hortons coffee. I'm thankful that, you know, that person's healthy and safe and at work to be able to give this service to me. So that's, I mean, that's great. Right. Yeah, that exactly. That's, you, you would hope, you would hope that people will come back, you know, be more gracious. And like you were saying with the Tim Hortons, uh, it's a newfound appreciation for workers, frontline workers and putting, you know, themselves at risk. Um, but let's get down to uh, how do people find you? You, you were mentioning your, your website, right? Yeah, so I mean, you can go to uh, openbartpo.com. Uh, um, again, I mean, there's catering options if you want to explore that. Uh, we, we can talk about it, especially if you've got events that are probably not happening now, but might be happening a year from now or a month or two months or whatever it is. Uh, so we're, we're more than happy to, to talk about those things. Um, our uh, online cocktail seminars will be posted on our website. Um, but like I said, that's going to be in every two weeks or so kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And then anytime we encourage people to reach out to us, just hop on the website. There's all kinds of contact us buttons. Um, contact us. It emails me directly. And we'd love to set up a private party for you, whether it be for a work event um, or, or just to hang out with your buddies. Um, and then also, of course, we're on Facebook and, and Instagram uh, at OpenBarTO. But uh, yeah, we'd love the followers and we'd love uh, to, to keep moving forward with this and this, this new situation of ours, you know? Yeah, for sure. Uh, in your, I, I was looking over your website, great website. Uh, you said it's usually in Toronto, but you have a two hour uh, buffer. And then uh, maybe if it's Muskoka night, you guys will be down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm so down, for, like I, I understand that to the T. Uh, was there any like moments or events that, or it's one of those things where you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm happy I'm doing this. This is, this is the reason why I'm doing this. Is, is there any moment that you're like, well, it was, yeah, it was, it was really educational. I mean, like when I wrote that website two years ago, it was with the assumption of what people are going to be asking me. Uh, and so it was super educational to find what they actually are asking me. And it's really funny. I mean, uh, there, there's a, uh, some people just have a, a different concept of, of things. They might call me from Ottawa and say, hey, can you come in and bartend an event for, uh, you know, at our house for 10 people? And I, I, you know, very politely inform them, that will be so expensive for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, I, I'm not even going to bother quoting you because you'll just be insulted and you yeah. should probably just find a kid down the street to come do that for you. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, there's, there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, it ultimately services like ours are, are meant to elevate an event to a level. I mean, that's why anyone would hire a food caterer as well, right? Yeah. You don't want to cook at home for a hundred people. Then, you know, you hire someone that's a pro and is going to do it really well. You hire us for the same reason. Um, if it's for 15 people, it might not be worth it for you. If it's for 100, that might be a really good investment. You know, If it's an 18-hour drive away, well, that's, that's, a, that's a different thing. If it's next door, great. You know, like, and if it's, it's, all, it's all very different. Every, every situation is a little bit different. We've never done an event. We, I, this is true. We have never done an event that I had the right preconception about. You know, we get it. We get a quote. I think, wow, okay, it's going to be like this, and it's never yeah. like that. <laughs> like it's, oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You think it's one thing, but it turned out to be something else. But yeah, no, that's that's awesome, man. Like I, one of the biggest things that I took or that what caught my attention is just how cool of a service and how cool of the idea uh, Open Bar Toronto is, and I definitely want to. Uh, sh uh, give you a, a moment, uh, shout you out, and uh, I I'll obviously post this all on social media. But th if you need something, if you want something to look fancy, or you need a pastime, if you want to learn something uh, on, like you were saying, the rum, whiskey, tequila, anything special when summertime comes around, this would be perfect. Perfect when summertime rolls around and we're all back. Uh, hanging out with each other. This is a great skill to learn. 
And Doug, thank you very much for coming on the podcast, man. This is so cool. And I uh, hope everyone found this interesting, and I know they will. And uh, hey, maybe round two and just kind of discuss about whiskey, because I'm definitely interested about that. Thanks very much for having me, Riley. Really appreciate it. All right, man. Uh, so everything that Doug said, all the ingredients, the where to find them, the website, everything that was mentioned in this podcast will be down below. Easy to access. But if you have any questions for Doug, his email will be there as well. So ladies and gentlemen, this has been episode four of the 92 Social Podcast. Remember, support local. Take care.